morning, everyone. And welcome to this uh, Reformation Sunday. Welcome to Christ Church Beau Repair. Uh, all to all of you who are worshiping with us in the church building and also those of you who are worshiping with us online. We hope that you will feel the Spirit moving strongly in this place uh, this morning. Uh, as I said, today we're celebrating Reformation Sunday, which may be new to you. Uh, this is... Uh, the 504th anniversary of the beginning of the Protestant Reformation. And this is a very important uh, uh, holiday for our Lutheran brothers and sisters. And I'll talk more about that later. Not all Anglican churches observe this day. Uh, some Anglican churches are observing All Saints Day today. Uh, we'll be doing that next, uh, Saturday, next Sunday uh, for All Saints. Um, because that's what the liturgical guidelines say, and to me it's strange to celebrate All Saints when we're still on uh, Halloween, or All Hallows Eve. So uh, we'll learn a little bit about this uh, day of Reformation a little bit later. Today the music will be uh, inspired by the, the Reformation. All our hymns are uh, hymns that are originally German Lutheran hymns. All of them are familiar. You're it's surprising how many hymns that we have in our hymnal that are uh, of German origin. And also for the communion hymn, the Evgenia will be singing one hymn that is actually in German. I think that's all the preliminary announcements I have. Our service begins with our opening hymn, Praise to the Lord Almighty, Common Praise 384.
and uh, fractured her arm. I mean, she's doing okay, but uh, she's taking uh, this uh, Sunday off. And uh, thanks to uh, Lorna and Susan who will be helping us with the readings and the prayers today. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Glance the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. enough, 
You're not a good enough person. Well, that's what he thought, and he worried that God, he wasn't good enough for God. And this caused him great suffering, great pain, to think that he, not, I'm not good enough for God. I will never be good enough. One day, though, he was studying the Bible, and he read uh, uh, some scripture, and he had this, this, this knowing, this realization that God loved him no matter how good he was, that God's love, something we call grace, but that means God's love, God's power, God's goodness to us is bigger than any of our, uh, any of our badness. So no matter how, uh, how bad we think we are, or not good enough we think we are, or people, other people tell us we're not good enough, Remember that God loves us, and God's love and goodness is bigger than all our, any bad thing that we can do. And that no matter what, God always loves us. Amen. Now the children can uh, go to Sunday school, and uh, our service continues. And we'll hear about, Mark, the adults will hear about Martin Luther a bit more in the sermon. service continues with the readings from Holy Scripture. city 
of the humble. Teach us to put our trust in you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The second lesson is from the letter to the Romans, chapter 3, verses 19 to 28. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced, and the whole world may be accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did not show this, he did not show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he has passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous, and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of bursting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that person is justified by faith, apart from works prescribed by the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham, and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Holy Trinity, the source of all the incarnate word, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As I said at the beginning, Reformation Day is not uh, universally celebrated by Anglican churches, but it sure is in Lutheran churches and some Anglican churches as well. And uh, I may, I've said this before that. Uh, my, my student ministry year was in St. John's Lutheran Church downtown, uh, and that was in 2017, which was the 500th year of the, uh, the Protestant Reformation. So you can imagine what a big deal that was. And that's kind of, you know, permanently, you know, scored into my, my consciousness. So I can't ever forget the Reformation Day again. So because it's kind of new to many of us, uh, I thought I'd give a little bit of historical background first. Uh, so today there'll be a little bit more history than usual. Uh, and to start, I'm going to read from uh, uh, all the, For All the Saints, which is an Anglican publication uh, that lists all the saints' days and holy days throughout the year. And it does a better job of giving the background than I could. On October 31st of the year 1517, a notice was posted on the door of the castle church at Wittenberg, a town in Saxony, Germany. 
It was put there by Martin Luther, an Augustinian monk, and a lecturer in the University of Wittenberg. He invited other academics to debate 95 theses or propositions regarding the church's doctrine and practice of penance. These 95 theses triggered a cluster of reactions which eventually forced Luther into open re rebellion against the Pope, and his rebellion set in train the movement called the Protestant Reformation. Luther and other leaders of this movement accused the church of encouraging works righteousness, the idea that people could earn salvation by doing good works. Against this notion, they preached salvation by faith alone, by faith in the sole righteousness of Christ. As a popular hymn has expressed it, look, Father, look on his anointed face, and only look on us as found in him. For lo, between our sins and their reward, we set the passion of thy Son, our Lord. Many heard this teaching as a word of liberation which released them from the fear that held them captive, and in its place gave them courage to live godly and gracious lives. There were others who remained faithful to the Roman Catholic Church and sought to renew its teaching and worship. They acted out of love for the unity of Christ's body, just as the Protestant reformers acted out of love for the truth of Christ's gospel. But it was the tragedy of their age that each side turned its love for Christ into a source of bitter conflict. So while we remember the Protestant and Catholic saints of the Reformation era, we may beseech Christ for the reconcili their reconciliation in heaven and for the healing of all divisions in the church on earth. So why should we, as Anglicans, observe Reformation Day? As I said, some Anglicans observe it, some don't. In Lutheran churches, it's universally celebrated. But we're not Lutherans. Though we should always be mindful of the fact that the Anglican Church of Canada is in full communion with the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada. And many churches are in full communion with other Lutheran churches around the world. For example, our mother church, the Church of England, is in full communion with the Church of Sweden and other uh, Lutheran churches of Europe. Full communion is the closest two Christian denominations can actually be without merging. And it's hard to kind of understand how this works, but uh, basically the Anglican Church and the Lutheran Church are two separate church organizations with separate traditions but uh, our priests and ministers are interchangeable. So basically, uh, an Anglican church can hire a Lutheran pastor to be their priest, and a Lutheran church can hire an Anglican priest to be their pastor, and no, former, no further you know, study or approval is required. So it's kind of like acknowledging that we're the same, but have different separate traditions. So in solidarity with our Lutheran partners, that's one good reason to observe Reformation Day. But also, the Anglican tradition itself is a product of the Protestant Reformation. The Reformation is in our blood, it's part of our heritage. The Anglican tradition is often referred to as both Catholic and Reformed, which means that our tradition is informed by both the thinking coming out of the Reformation and the Catholic Church, which existed for over a thousand years before the Reformation. But even though Lutherans are normally considered unambiguously in the Protestant column, the same thing could be say, said for the Lutheran tradition. That is, it's a blend of Catholic and Reformed elements, which is probably why we get along so well. And this is because Martin Luther, who we met in the Playmobil form earlier, uh, as revolutionary as his actions were at the time, because you know that when he was when he started the Reformation, there was only one church in the West, in Western Europe, it was the Roman Catholic Church. So any change was a radical one. But he was a reformer rather than a radical revolutionary. And unlike some other Protestant reformers later on, Luther sought only to reform those parts of the Catholic tradition and structure that had, in his eyes, become corrupted. He didn't seek to tear down the church and rebuild it from scratch. 
For this reason, Luther, like the Anglican reformers in England, retained much of the pre-Reformation Catholic tradition, like the stru structure of the Mass. Basically, our service is uh, the same as the Catholic Mass. Vestments, like I'm wearing, the liturgical calendar that we use throughout the year, stained glass, art, sometimes statues. This continu continuity with the past is important. Radical revolution, whether political or religious, rarely ends with the intended consequences. And revolution often gives way to new forms of dogma to replace old ones that were overthrown. Even Jesus, whose ministry could be seen as radical in certain ways, was deeply rooted in the Jewish tradition and the Jewish prophetic spirituality that paved, was what paved the way for his teachings in the Gospels. Martin Luther is probably best known for his, the, the, the teaching of salvation by faith alone. I'm sure you've heard of that. And it was largely inspired by that reading from Romans that we heard today. And this is the idea that God's freely given grace is what redeems us, as opposed to being redeemed by our, by our own works or righteousness. And this is a teaching we as Anglicans hold dear as well. And just as a powerful symbol of this, whenever we have a baptism of children, an infant, we ask why we baptize infants that don't know what's happening. Well, it's the idea that God's grace is is a freely given gift that we don't even, we can't work for. And a, and a child being baptized, they receive that gift freely and without any merit. But despite making it a, a famous as a slogan, Luther didn't invent this idea, nor did he just rediscover it uh, as a teaching that had been long oppressed by the Catholic Church. The teaching of salvation by grace was always part of Catholic teaching, if you looked hard enough. Catholic theologians like St. Augustine, who wrote a thousand years before Luther, he talked about salvation by grace extensively. What Luther did was to bring it back into focus and make it relevant to the time that he was living in. And so even though we commemorate this milestone event, that happened 504 years ago, uh, which kicked off the Reformation, we should not make the mistake of romanticizing this era as some sort of golden age for evangelical witness. I think that our celebration of Reformation should not be just a commemoration of a certain historical event or events, but rather a reminder that Reformation is and indeed must be an ongoing part, an ongoing process in the church, an ongoing process in society, and an ongoing process in our own selves. Of course, you notice that I'm wearing red today. It's not often that I, I get to wear red. Do you remember when the last time I wore red on a Sunday was? It was Pentecost, way back in June or May, I can't remember. And at Pentecost, of course, we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit, the red tongues of fire coming down. And that's why red is associated with the Holy Spirit. It's an active, warm color. And that's why I'm wearing red for Reformation. Because Reformation as an ongoing process is the work of the Holy Spirit, who continually brings the gospel afresh to every generation. This reality of the Holy Spirit means that we, we as individuals, we as human society, and we as the church, are all works in progress, never completed and never perfect. The gospel is not restricted to pages of books written a couple thousand years ago. The gospel is not restricted to theological writings from reformers of 500 years ago. The Holy Spirit continues to speak to us today and she is speaking to our modern world. Martin Luther said that Christians are simultaneously saints and sinners. I find that thought comforting. 
What he means is that even though we are made righteous through God's freely given grace, we are still flawed human beings. And we will continue to be flawed as long as we draw breath. And Luther himself as an individual is a prime example of this. Despite his great theological and musical legacy, he wrote a lot of hymns too, many hymns that we know well. On the dark side, Luther was infected, like many people in Europe of his day, with the disease of anti-Semitism, and wrote many things against Jews and against other, other types of people. Now, does that mean that we should cancel Luther? Eradicate him from history? No, but it helps to keep our perspective. We all as individuals, and this is as societies, as institutions, as countries, as churches, we are all flawed and in constant need of reform and renewal. Have you ever looked back to a time much earlier in your life and say to yourself, I don't recognize that person. Perhaps not. Perhaps you've had an idyllic life without any regrets. If so, you're very lucky. But I think most of us have had moments, or at least periods, of our lives when we'd have rather done things differently, gone back and adjusted this, this or that thing. And this is not just us as individuals, but we see this also uh, in the society we live in, in the church that we are in, when we look back on our history, we look at things that are terrifying to us and think, how could we have done that, we as human beings? There are many things that shock and, and uh, disgust us in our own histories. Fortunately, God doesn't expect us to be perfect. We live in a broken world which always misses the mark. And God's grace assures us that no matter what, God loves us, even, and perhaps especially because of, our brokenness. That doesn't mean we should just give up on trying to be better. We're also called to try harder, to be better, to make progress, to make our world a more just and fair place, to make our church a more true, a truer expression of the gospel, and to make ourselves more Christ-like. But we are not left alone to, to struggle on our own in these endeavors. The Holy Spirit, working in us, working in the church, working in our world, calls us and nudges us constantly to reform and renewal. And as we were, we were reminded very vividly of this, at the end of the book of Revelation, almost at the end of the Bible, there's this, uh, there's this striking uh, quote coming from Christ. Behold, I am making all things new. Amen. Let us stand and confess the faith of our baptism in the words of the Apostles' Creed, as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. 
made us and entrusted your world to us. We give you thanks for the wondrous colors of the fall, the clean cold of winter snow, the new growth in the spring, and the warmth of summer. We pray that we lead the nations of the world to treat the earth with care and respect. Teach us to share her resources with equity and generosity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we have brought violence into your world. We are jealous of others, fearful of loss, protective of our borders. Lead us into a better understanding of the other and to recognize that all are our sisters and brothers. We confess that we have been guilty of mistreating our Aboriginal brothers and sisters, and we pray for forgiveness and for the strength to face our prejudice. We put your trust in we put our trust in your compassion. We rely on your mercy, and we pray that you open us to your wisdom and guide us to the restoration of justice for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you do not ignore the suffering of your people, but we do not act in accordance with your will. You give us leaders who speak the truth, but we do not listen. We pray that you open our ears and our hearts to hear and follow your message. Only you can lead us to peace. And we pray that you grant all world leaders the courage to hear and obey your call. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who support us here at Christ Church, for our Pastor Joel, our lay leader Karen, our corporation members, our music leader Sylvia, those on our prayer team team, Alter Guild, our Sunday School leaders, Irene, Cliff, Evgenia, and all the members of the parish who support us in so many ways. Lord, in your mercy. In the Anglican Communion, we pray for Mary, Robert, David, Linda, and Michelle. We pray for the Anglican Church of Canada, for the Anglican Province of Alexandria, and for the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Canada. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our Christ Church prayer roster, we pray for Rona Massad, Clara Mazzarelli, Tyler Millicent Taylor, Cara Ben Benuti, and their family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your healing touch on all the sick and those in need, and in particular for Deirdre, Gordon, Art, and Laura, for Lisa, Colleen, Tavis, Elena, and Anne, for Gloria, Sandy, and Karen, for Eleanor, Mary, Irene, and Robbie. We pray for strength and comfort and peace of mind for them and for their family and friends, giving comfort and support. We pray for those suffering the loss of loved ones and for their families and friends. Grant them comfort and peace of mind. We pray for Irene, Irene Chobokowski, for Ingrid and Gordon Gillis, for Owen Morgan, for Sherry and Phil Hurt. For Sandy and Ian Temple, for Nancy, Larry, Jeff, and Andy Dole, and for Cedric Cole. And now I invite you to name either aloud or silently those on your hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray that you draw us ever closer, filling us with your Holy Spirit. May we feel your presence and your guidance in all we do and say. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
friends in Christ. God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son and Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Now share a sign of the peace of Christ with your neighbor at a safe distance or online in the comments section.
God of mercy and forgiveness, grant that in contending for your truth we may have grace to put on the righteousness of Christ and worship you by faith with thanksgiving. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, sustainer of the universe. You are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets and their courses, and this fragile earth, our, our island home. By your will they were created and have their being. Glory to you forever and ever. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the stewards of creation. Glory to you forever and ever. But we turn against you and betray your trust, and we turn against one another. Again and again you call us to return. Through the prophets and sages you reveal your righteous law. In the fullness of time you sent your Son, born of a woman, to be our Savior. He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. By his death he opened, up the way, opened to us the way of freedom and peace. Glory to you forever and ever. Therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn as we sing.
break this bread and share in the body of Christ. We drink from our body, but we all share in the one bread. So come to this table, you who have much faith, and you who would like to have more. You who have been to this sacrament often, and you who have not been for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who have failed. Come, it is Christ who invites us to meet him here. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I remind you, for communion, please come up by the center, center aisle and return by the side.
And together we pray. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. Gracious God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we who share his body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We who the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so that we and all your children shall be free. And the whole earth lives to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Okay, buckle in for, uh, for a lot of uh, dense announcements, because we have a very dense week coming up, and um, for the record, I don't usually ask you to come to church multiple times in a week. Uh, there's only about, there's only one other time in the, in the year I would ask you to do that, and that's Holy Week, where you, I will ask you to come to church like three times, but uh, this is the only other occasion I can think of when I would ask you to come to church three times in the span of seven days. But I, I, I do ask you to try it this, this once, and it, I promise it's not a weekly thing. First of all, on this Wednesday, November 3rd at 7 p.m., we'll be having an All Souls Requiem for all those who have died. And you have an opportunity to uh, write the names of your departed loved ones on the sheet in the back of the church, or you can send their names to the church office. And please indicate if they died in the last year. We will be uh, commemorating them with, uh, a ca with candles, and all the other names will be read out loud during this uh, service of Holy Communion for all the uh, departed. Uh, it will be a very uh, moving, meditative service with full musical program. Uh, we'll have pieces from uh, Foray's Requiem Mass and other uh, favorite hymns. So. Uh, uh, please join us for that. It will be broadcast online as well, but if you can, come in person. That's Wednesday at 7. Next Saturday is the big event, um, when finally I'm going to be inducted as parish priest after all these months. Um, you, if you're on the parish email list, you have, you've already received uh, the invitation, and most of you, I think, or a large portion of you, have already registered. There's still places available, but you do have to register in advance. You can't walk in. You have to register in advance. If you're, uh, if you receive the invitation, you know what to do. If you're not on the parish list or didn't get the invitation, and everyone in this room is invited, let me be clear. Please come see uh, Donna or me after the service, and we'll make sure you get uh, uh, that invitation. Um, <clears throat> So our bishop will be here next Saturday at 2 o'clock uh, to formally install me as the parish priest. And like I said, please register. Now, that is going to be the Eve of, of All Saints, even though today is officially the Eve of All Saints, but we're celebrating All Saints Day next Sunday, so that will be the Eve of All Saints. On Sunday, we still have church. So, even if you came on Saturday for my induction, don't think you're, you, you get a pass for Sunday. I mean, I'll forgive you, but still, you know, I, I don't want to be, you know, uh, I don't want to have an empty church on Sunday morning. So, uh, please come on Sunday morning as well for All Saints Day, and that will be your third service in the week. And I promise you the next week you won't have to come to serve church three times. What else do we have? Um, the following Sunday, November 14th, is uh, Remembrance Sunday. Now I know you're saying that's after Remembrance Day, but it's the way that the, the church calendar is this year. It got pushed to November 14th. We'll have it, be having a service of Remembrance Day. Also, November 14th at 4.30 is our next Pause and Pray service. So if you have uh, a dog, or you're a dog lover, or you know a dog lover, uh, please spread the word about that service. You can bring your dog to church. 
Inter intergenerational choir. Um, Sylvia made the announcement last week that uh, she is looking to restart a choir, a seasonal choir, not every Sunday choir, a seasonal choir to start, right? Um, and the idea would be to prepare a few pieces for Advent lessons and carols. That would be a starting point. So if you're interested in the choir, please contact Sylvia or the church office. If there's not enough interest, it won't happen. So if you're interested at all, please step up. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, and of course, if you haven't got your 2022 church calendar yet, <laughs> with this lovely set of hands on the front, for those of you who are, who are not here in the past two Sundays, those are my hands right there. And that's Bishop Mary's hands. This is during my ordination two, two years ago. I said, this is a unique opportunity to, for five dollars to get a collector's item like this. <laughs> and we still have some in stock, so, you know, get them while you can. One other thing, uh, for Thanksgiving we participated in the St. Michael's Mission food drive. And I have a letter of a thank you from uh, the director of St. Michael's Mission, Chantal Leferdier. Uh, I'll read what she wrote. Uh, dear Reverend and listeners, to all of you as well, we would like to take this opportunity to thank you and the Congregation of Christ Church Beaurepaire for the overwhelming generosity you've shown to St. Michael's mission. Twice now in the last several months, we have called upon you for your help and your response has moved everyone. We are so grateful at this time of Thanksgiving and always for friends like you. Once again, a special thanks to Tom Battersell and Walter Noya for them skillfully managing to fit everything into the truck and for delivering it safely to the mission. For, for all those on the street who have come to call St. Michael's Mission their safe harbor and their family, thank you for helping us so that we may continue to fight homelessness and hunger. So, well done, and we will continue to uh, cooperate with uh, St. Michael's Mission, our mission downtown. Any other announcements? Susan. This is not fun script today, although I will be taking <laughs> orders, and if you want to place your order, deliver it either to me today, or I need it by Thursday this coming week in order to deliver it in a week, okay? But mm -hmm. this is in regards to Karen Burkett, okay? As you heard, as Joel announced, Karen had a serious fall and a severely broken her arm. What I understand is, at the moment, she's got it taped to her body. She's not allowed to move it at all. She's going to need some help. Okay, she's pretty much incapacitated at this time. And so we'd like to ask for some financial assistance for her, because she's not able to do part-time work that she's been doing to, her, to supplement her income. And um, if you are prepared to help out with that, if you could put some money in an envelope, just mark Karen's name on it, Leave it at the church. We will make sure it gets to her. If you want to leave a check, I don't know about her banking situation. If you want to leave a check, you can make the check out to me. I will cash it and put the cash in an envelope to deliver to her. However, I want you all to be aware, these are not tax receivable donations. These are not donations to the church. These are helping out a friend in need. In addition to that, She's going to have to have some assistance around the house, maybe shopping, um, whatever. At the moment, there's a list in the, on the table in the narthex. If you could sign up and contact, contact Karen and say, this is what I can do for you, or call her and say, what can I do for you? So those are the problems that Karen is facing at the moment, and we would like to rally around and help her out. Okay, thank you. Thanks for that update, Susan, which is actually more than I, I, I had heard. Uh, well, I answered this all through, basically through Ingrid. Ingrid has been in touch with her, and she's sort of passed it on to me because she's busy with family issues with her husband being in the hospital, so. Yes, please, uh, please pray for Karen, and if you can, uh, uh, provide financial assistance because she, she's not able to work now. And, uh, and as you see, I was, uh, you know, Manning the fort by myself, you know, today, and thank you to Susan and Lorna for helping with the prayers and the readings, 
And I don't know how Karen will be uh, in the up upcoming weeks, but we'll all need to pull together uh, to, uh, to make these services happen. And do keep her in your prayers. And now we will sing our final hymn. We'll stand and sing, Now Thank We All Our God. How many praise? 399. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.